So here's your nursing care now. So you're watching not only the response to therapy, which is not always positive. We may have complications. And patients may have untoward effects uh, due to the nature of the airway, the artificial airway and the mechanical ventilator. So you watch for indicators of hypoxia or obviously indicators whether or not they are doing well or not doing well. So what will be your assessments? ABG. ABG number one, yes, uh, you look at skin color, yeah. you look okay. at urine output, yes. you look at vital signs, okay, you look at bowel function. Okay, so everything. Okay, so you look at circulation. Is it working or are they experiencing complications, not just from the immobility, but also from the therapy. So self-explanatory, so you look, look at the tidal volume. Is it is it what it's supposed to be? I mentioned earlier yeah. that just because the patient gets a preset tidal volume doesn't mean they're getting it. So as the patient's condition changes, let's say the lung compliance changes, the lung compliance drops, of course the tidal volume will be less. But the ventilator will have an alarm. We'll examine two sets of alarms shortly. I'll just point out the important things. Okay, so P, okay, alarms. <clears throat> we will discuss and test high pressure and low pressure alarms. There are other, uh, multiple other alarms on the vent, but we'll focus on what will trigger a high pressure and a low pressure alarm and then what your role is what do you do when these types of alarms turn on a general rule is yes there will be noises there will be alarms but who do you always assess first look at the patient first not the machine okay the vent will will ask for your attention but patient first no matter what the vent says look at your patient literally so same principles as with cardiac monitoring we did last semester. Okay. Now there will be alarms which cause, which really is no concern. I mean, the machine just, let's say the, the airway size changes, for instance, or the patient has extra secretions. Sometimes there will be alarms which just are just annoying. So it looks like a situation of the you no know, the boy crying wolf, but we don't want to develop alarm fatigue though. Even though you know, yes, I'm sure that's not a problem, okay? And then your CNA keeps calling you, hey, alarm, yeah, I can hear it. And then you say, hey, it's nothing. No, go check. It's alarming for a reason. If it keeps alarming, fix it, okay? You can't fix it, call someone who can fix it. Another thing that these machines do now is they will record the events and they can be <laughs> reported by the respiratory therapist. Meaning mm -hmm. if you did not address the alarm, you left it alarming for hours on end, it will be reported and you can be disciplined for it because obviously there's an alarm. Even if you, let's say you have an exp written explanation of it was nothing then you're still required to fix it, okay? So we don't want alarm fatigue. So this is exactly what the what happened to the boy who cried wolf? Yeah, and then there was really a wolf, okay? And then what happened to the sheep? Yeah, the sheep. And then in this case, the sheep is your patient. Yes, Chris? Aren't there some differences when they report it with the actual camera? Um, some, some hospitals have that, uh, but not all because of... HIPAA concerns, obviously. We have the option to silent the alarm for two minutes. So that means you have to go in there every two minutes to silence the alarm if that's how you want to deal with it. All right. There's no way to mute alarms now. <clears throat> you can't even change the volume because people died when we had those options during my time. So no more in advanced uh, age today, no more. They, you can't. Mute it. You can silence it. Two minutes. That's it. So here are a few problems. Let me see. Okay.
Okay, let's let's start here. What will trigger a high pressure alarm? It's usually an obstruction between the patient and the vent. Hey, let's look at this picture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, look at the picture on the side. So this is your ventilator, it's your circuits, and this is your patient. <clears throat> because the setup is like this, now the Ventilator will humidify and warm the air into as it delivers the, the breath because we're bypassing the nose, right? So we have no structures to um you know warm and humidify the we're bypassing it because now we have a plastic airway. Uh you see this device right here, which is circular. Yeah, that's like a nose. You understand? So that's like a nose. Yeah, like what does your nose do? And there's hair there also, right? Yeah, so it's like a nose. Okay. Anyway, so what do you get when you add humidity and warmth? Moisture. So as it enters, the each breath enters because look at this dependent loop right here. What will gather in this part of the circuit? There will be moisture, and eventually, after a week or more, there will be water there. <clears throat> what can that water do to the pressure between the vent and the patient's lung? What pressure will be triggered? High or low? High pressure. So what do you do? Okay. So don't put it back into the humidifier, nor do you put it into the patient's airway. So just disconnect the circuit. Just takes two seconds, disconnect it, drain that water. Please don't. That water, is that clean? No. It's days old. It's weeks old. So get rid of it. Okay, don't do that. Okay. No, 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 no. That is old. We don't know how long that's been there. All right. You know what to do? Okay, I said it, so... If you listen, all right. Yeah. Uh, another. So let's say the patient has secretions in the airway. What pressure will it trigger? High or low? High. Uh, very good. What do you do? Suction. suction. What are the indicators of suctioning again? When... No, indications. How do you know that it, the patient needs it? Okay. The desaturation. You can see it. Okay. <laughs> What about you here, wrong time? Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a, um, or of course, the high pressure alarm is triggering. It could be, it could be secretions. Okay. Uh, what else? The patient develops a pneumothorax. Yes, meaning the, rup the lungs ruptured. Say, let's say, uh, barotrauma, you know, pressure trauma. Because are your lungs used to positive pressure? No, no. no. we are negative pressure. So prolonged positive pressure ventilation. What will that do to your delicate alveoli? It can, can rupture. Okay, so it's possible. Uh, what else can do high pressure? Um, let's say the nurse is stepping on the circuit. Okay, the circuit's extra long. You're stepping on it. Okay, what alarm will be triggered? High pressure. Okay. You, you, you get it now? What will trigger high pressure alarm? All right. What if the patient's lung compliance dropped? Let's say they got worse. The patient now developed pneumonia. What kind of alarm will come up? High or low? Low. low. High because the lungs are stiffer. Okay. Yeah. Compliance drop. Okay. Let's go now to low pressure alarm. What do you think will trigger a low pressure alarm? a loss of pressure, which is an example, disconnect. patients disconnected because the circuit can disconnect anytime. Patients moving around or they're waving their arms, they pull that that circuit, it'll trigger low pressure alarm. So just come in, put it back. 
put mittens on them, whatever you need to do. Uh, that's just one. What if there's a hole in the circuit? Okay. What if the patient pulled the airway out and the airway is now on the table or the patient's holding the airway when you came in? What type of alarm will come up? Low pressure. Yes. Well, it depends. If you, you find them like that, well, assess the patient first. Do they need to be intubated again? Obviously, if they're, you know, they're fine and then just, ah, they're talking, they're, do they need to be intubated? No. 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 So would they put them in a Again, do you deal with this scenario uh, depending yeah. on the well, patient's presentation? Yeah, <laughs> no, they already pulled it out. Yeah, the airway is already in their hands. Okay, Using it as a weapon. Um, what else will cause loss of pressure? Let's say... Uh, the patient stopped breathing. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, no pressure, right? No resistance. Um, yeah, patient's dead. But, um, what else? Okay. So there are a few. These are different alarms, right? All right. Yes, high and low pressure. So just stick with uh, high pressure. So any condition that will increase the resistance between the vent and the patient. Low pressure loss of resistance what if the patient is biting the tube high pressure very good children wherein the pressure between the vent and the patient is increased yeah so the secretions both in the circuit or here that will increase pressure resistance so here are your uh, action so there's increased peak pressure airway pressure that means there's secretions right okay. here or the patient's coughing or the patient's fighting the vent so this is what you do suction empty the condensation how do you empty again okay not what chris's um co-workers were doing okay so you disconnect the circuit empty the condensate okay or maybe the patient is just restless because your propofol is empty. There's no more sedation. So make sure they're sedated. Here, decreased lung compliance. What kind of pressure again? High or low? High pressure. All right. Here, the tubing is kinked. High or low pressure? High pressure. Okay. And these are your actions. Okay. Last column is how do you fix it? Do you have to call RT each time? No, because no, when the when will they come? Forever. Hmm? Well, t let me put it this way. So if you're in ICU, you have a dedicated RT. There's one you there okay. or two. Okay, if you're lucky, one or two. In they'll stay in the ICU. All other floors, you're sharing them with other units. Oh. So that RT is on multiple floor assignments. So can they grab an elevator? Not all of them are in the best shape. So <laughs> consider also, you know, uh, the stairs, if they can go up and down the stairs. So it'll be a while. So meanwhile, do you wait and then just tell the patient, sorry, I have to wait. I mean, all right. So these are the actions you can do. All right. Okay. Okay, so here's the barotrauma I mentioned earlier. This can cause a pneumothorax. This is really the because of high pressure, the lung ruptured. Okay, the alveoli ruptured and cause air into the to go into the uh, pleural cavity with nowhere to go. Yes, that can be tension pneumothorax. Or here's our most dreaded because this we will lose money from this one so pulmonary infection this is referring to vap ventilator associated pneumonia it occurs 48 hours after intubation okay so if your patient's been on on a vent two days or more the yeah so but we have a bundle so once your patient is intubated we have to follow a bundle <clears throat> we'll get to the bundle shortly
So what do you do? The patient loses an airway right here. They pull it out. You have no airway. What do you mean put it in? Okay, start bagging the patient. Okay. They took out the endotracheal tube. Oh, the whole tube? Bag. Yeah. Bag. Okay. <laughs> Bag. So, yeah, so in this picture right here, what do you think is the most important equipment? The bamboo bag. The ambu bag. Okay. Because the ventilator is actually a glorified ambu bag, if you think about it. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, the vent is a glorified ambu bag. So instead of you manually bagging the patient, you're asking a computerized machine to do it for you. All right. So things break down. Let's say we lose power. Electromagnetic fields will knock these things out. What's your only best friend? Yeah, the bag. Okay. So don't go, oh, patients are screwed. I have no vent. No, you have an ambu bag. So the same bag that's used to. Uh, yeah, you're activate. doing to pump. Yeah, that same bag. So you put the same spot yeah. on the neck without the. Yeah, okay. just bag or over the mouth. Okay. Yeah, whichever airway is open. So, Professor, I mean, you don't put yeah, when you do the come out, you don't put another tray. Uh, that's a different uh discussion. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you need um. Or you can put a smaller. Well, since you asked that. No, 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 no. They might go down the wrong. That's what I'm saying. No, you just put it back in the open. Okay. Um, if you've never discussed this in another. So tracheostomies have three parts. So we have the outer cannula, the inner cannula, and the obturator. This, <laughs> this is the obturator. This solid thing here is just a, uh, right here, this is clear. This one here, this is clearer. This is the obturator. The only time you'll see this is when the doctor first puts in a tracheostomy. After that, they'll discard it, but we'll have a extra set at the bedside in case these things happen. So let's say you guys keep removing your old ties before you put on the new one, okay? And then the patient pops out the airway. So you need this obturator in order to insert. This is what Paulina is referring to. You need this. So this one, this is like um, you, you when you assemble this. So this one goes in here. This thing goes in here. All right. Okay. And then you insert the whole thing. Does that make sense? Any question? After insertion, though, if you successfully put it in, should we leave this thing in? No. no. You only need it to insert. See the point? It's rounded, so it will go into the incision. You can't put this in without this. It will never go in. This is a sharp edge. You need a pointy, round thing to go through the incision. All right? Well, the inner cannula is already there. Again, this thing goes in here, and this thing goes in here. All right? Like uh, what do you call those Russian dolls? Um, yeah, there's a doll inside the doll yeah. inside the doll. <laughs> What's called? Matryoshka. Please don't forget to take out the obturator. Are we clear? Because is your airway open? If this is this thing stays in there, all right. That's only when you put it. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, so to other, when, when we say restraints, that's um, last resort, okay? Physical restraints are last resorts. We do use chemical restraints routinely. So that's what the propofol, the sedative is for, right? Whatever sedative the doctor ordered. So that's our chemical restraints. Uh, wrist restraints, again, if let's say there's a reason we can't use chemical restraints or the patient is, let's say, has a extensive, a drug use history, so they're resistant or very tolerant to 
um, benzo, so therefore we'll have to resort to and restraints. Okay. Communication, don't talk like the patient is not there. It's common uh, to do that. They, you, you know, you're just talking with your partner, you know, uh, talking about stuff. Oh, did you hear? Oh, I heard about your, about your baby daddy. Ah. Yeah. Talk about that stuff in, step, uh, in, in front of the patient, all right? So they hear everything. So don't act like or behave like they're not there. So treat them no different from any other patient who's alert. Whatever you're doing, okay, we're turning you, okay? We're cleaning you. Okay, one, one of my friends got um, in trouble. I mean, he was my good friend, but then he, you know, he was talking about the patient's bush, um, you know, turning. Oh, that's a lot of bush, man. I just kept quiet. The patient, um, the pa when the patient was extubated, she remembered. She heard everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard to, to lie, huh? Well, I can say that I gave him the dirty look. Yeah, I, I see. Him. Yeah, I can do that. Patients can't see. She heard, but not my voice. That's what you can prove. Okay, let's go now to the uh, prevention. So barotrauma, make sure your pressures are okay. Okay, watch, listen to lung sounds. Make sure the settings are what they should be. Any changes don't, in the, especially high pressure alarms that indicates your pressure must be lowered because otherwise you'll have barotrauma and the pneumothorax always follows. Pulmonary infection. So this is again, ventilator associated pneumonia occurs uh, more than two days. So that's 72 hours. Let's go to the bundle. Why is it in here? Okay, take this down because I can't find it. Okay, take this, all of you, and write. <laughs> Part of the bundle, ventilator-associated pneumonia bundle. Okay, number one, oral care every two hours. Oral care every two hours. Number two, you use... Um, GI prophylaxis, which is either proton pump inhibitors or H2 receptor blockers. The reason for that is we can't prevent aspiration. Patient will aspirate, but if the acid level is kept higher than normal, will the patient likely to have acute lung injury if they aspirate? No. Okay, so that's why GI prophylaxis is part of the bundle. As far as oral care, again, that's part of the aspiration. We cannot 100% prevent aspiration. There will be some level of aspiration, but at least if the secretions, the oral secretions are clean or cleaner, is it likely to cause pneumonia? No. All right. Yes, ma'am. Or H2 receptor blockers, whichever one, whichever drug is uh, ordered. And head of the bed should be how much? How many degrees? 30. Okay, 30 minimum to 45 degrees. We prefer 30 because 45 will increase pressure ulcer. Yeah. Uh, so we prefer 30. Um so and then suction as needed. So that's number four. Yeah. So what are they again? What do you got? Okay, very good. Okay, so that's the VAP bundle. <clears throat> VAP bundle. Yeah. 
Bundle. Yeah, like a bundle here. A bundle of... Uh, so these are bundle of actions. Okay, we call them... We have a bundle for... for We have a sepsis. Remember? So variable sepsis bundle. This is for VAP. Ventilator associated pneumonia. VAP bundle. All right? as far as the circuit uh last thing so the circuit you know the tubings the blue tubing on the ventilator mm -hmm. we do not routinely change that okay it's not like uh, like every day or every few days no we do not change the circuits they're expensive only as needed stairs start looking nasty then you you change it okay don't it's not like change every shift or a number of days all right it's whenever when they look nasty change it okay yeah moisture of course we we check routinely yeah because that will uh cause um High alarm, high pressure alarm. We that again depends on the the hospital, but there's no routine um, changing of the circuit. If your hospital has one, then follow it. But um, typically, no. A okay, last respiratory topic is chest trauma. And then we'll go to liver. Uh, there are different causes. Let's, uh, 